thank you for tuning in to any of our videos. We also want to just ask your forgiveness if anything in this comes off offensive or abrasive. It is not our intent to cause division. What we would like you to do is enter into just a relationship as a believer with us, knowing that we're as much of a work in progress as you are, and that you would continue to pray for Nehemiah Abilene. So Wednesday for lunch, you go out to what's called Potter's Pizza. It's like a pizza salad buffet thing, right? They have a men's group there uh, called Mighty Men. And uh, uh, you get a chance even in that, when you get there, if you want to get on the list to be a speaker, you can speak. Matt spoke there, Rico has, Josh Monarez has. I don't know if anybody else has. But you have the opportunity, you get to engage. They, they do about 30 minutes of, of uh, 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 session or whatever you want to call it, where there's a speaker whether they're sharing testimony or doing a teaching and then uh and then 30 minutes where they just open it for discussion and although the dude man the dudes uh that spoke yesterday it, it was so far uh that i think it went so far over people's heads they didn't even pick it up whatever he, what he was talking about but it, what he said uh he said he was talking about how the miracles are what hardened pharaoh's heart and that sometimes we don't see the miracle signs and wonders because it would harden our heart. And I instantly was like, man, that's pride right there. It's gonna, the way it hardens my heart is in my own pride. So if I'm praying and I'm like, man, let him see and his eyes open, I'm like, yep, I did. I prayed for that. I don't say I did that, all glory be to God. I say, I prayed for that. And then there's a part of me that hope is, hopes there's a line at the door that says, man, that dude over at Nehemiah, Lee, he can pray and you can see. And I'm like, glory be to God. Just line, get in the line. Let's keep it orderly. You know, keep the, the noise to a minimum. You know, I mean, I'm just trying to be honest and open. And I'm like, thank you, God, for protecting me from myself. He mentioned in his, he talked about his marriage, though, and it was just powerful what he said. And that's what spun most of the conversation the rest of the time. But, but it was just so open and honest, him saying, you know, I've been married 20 years and most of it's been bad. And most of it's my fault. And I'm just now in a place where I'm trying to love my wife, even though she sins against me daily. And I want it. There's a part of me, the gossip in me wants to be like, what's she doing? You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean? You mean, you mean sinning against you? Or like, you know, just being a jerk. You know what I'm, cause I, we want to know. But, uh, but the reality is would it matter to be, to be whatever that was happening so continually say every day, to lay down my life and stay in position. That's what he said. The Bible clearly tells me to, li to, to love my wife like Christ loved the church. And it was just, it was really good. And that was a little graphic, whatever. But it made me think about that. Like, what is she really doing? It just did. And uh, so I can't, I, I enjoy watching guys get to go there for the first time, partly because of the pizza. Because the first time after three months, a dude gets to go pile a plate this high. It's just enjoyable to watch. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like you're like a little kid. Every dude that goes. I've yet to meet a man that just hates pizza. And if you do, they've got ch ch chopped up chicken thighs with wing sauce on them. I think they call them boneless wings. I call them nuggets. You're lying to yourself if you call them boneless wings. That's not what they are. It's a lie. It's a nugget. Bro, they've been doing it for a long time. They just try to raise the price on you. You go to McDonald's, get like 30 nuggets for like $2. You go to Wingstop, you get 30 nuggets for $30. It's crazy. Uh, uh, but it's the other part is that they get to uh, see how the community is responding to you guys. You're loved in that room. You're admired in that room. You're an equal in that room. And they want you to know that. And there's a lot of connections for you men to be made in that room. Uh, so I get excited for that. And it's whenever, it's one of those introductory things of whenever you're carrying the message of this place outside of this place. I don't, if it, but it ain't the right, it ain't, it ain't the time. Well, go ahead, Tyler. Well, that's awesome. Hmm. That's good. Well, I appreciate that. Yesterday, I got a text that said, hey, I found y'all. 
question mark, question mark. <laughs> you are not here on 20th. And he sent me a picture of a flyer that said, we proudly support the men of Nehemiah and their mission to retrieve, renew, blah, 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 blah. Uh, our employees that donate are allowed to wear jeans to work at Abilene Teachers Federal Credit Union. And I'm like, I didn't even know that. I'm like, oh, I had no idea. Uh, so you have an impact, right? I didn't even know we were out there in that way like that. Uh, let me pray for us. Father God, I, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing, what you're doing in this place. Lord God, I ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing to you, my rock and my redeemer, making all of us a pure heart and a right spirit. Yes, in uh, Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, yesterday, we ended up with, uh, we finished up 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 12, right? It's lead us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And so there's a part of that, that where we have to understand that if we're going to be led, we have to focus. If we're going to be led, we have to understand that we now have this ministry. And in this ministry, we lose all right to ourselves. We don't rejoice in wrong, which means we don't have to be right. Because if we have to be right, we're making you wrong. And then we're out of position. You understand? We don't have to mishandle the word of truth to prove our point or our opinion. Christ has been right from the cross for thousands of years. And it's important to know that. It's important to know that what we have now inside of us is going to draw others to us. That women are going to be attracted to the healer in you. The deliverer in you. And so we can't, we've got to be cautious against that. We, there's a responsibility that goes along with that. That if I'm walking fully in the anointing and authority of who he says I am, reflecting the image of Jesus and wielding the power of God himself, which is the Holy Spirit, that I have to know that there's a great responsibility with that to not mislead for my own agenda. It means I constantly have to be measuring my motive. I have to examine myself. I have to know where the enemy is, the real enemy, not the one that can't defeat me, but the one that surrenders to defeat. You understand? That's where we left off. Somebody give me James 1, 2 through 5. Joel, give me, uh, good to see you. You've been, busy, you've been a busy dude this week, haven't you? You look sleepy. Are you upset? Okay, give me James uh, 1, 13 through 18. Uh, Zach, give me, you look, look how Tyler's trying to flash his Bible. Uh, uh, Zach, give me Revelation 21, six through eight. And then, uh, Jeff, give me, uh, second Timothy two, 11 through 13. And then Casey, give me Romans eight, one through 17. If we're, if we're able to get there. Let me know when everybody's ready. Are we good? Good. Second Timothy two, eleven through thirteen, sir. Not working, is it? Is it working or not working? I'm getting this to pick up the voice of the oh, okay. scriptures. Oh, my bad. You're going to have to cut that out of the video. Yeah. <clears throat> That'd be a good. That help? More work. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> All right, give me James 1, 2 through 5. James 1, 2 through 5. Consider it a great joy, my brothers, whenever you experience various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. But endurance must do its complete work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Listen, I can, I can, get, I can tell you that it's, it's good for us to kind of jump around and be like, I'm going to face all these trials and temptations with joy. And to be honest, <coughs> for the most part, as I get stronger, the ones that I know are just trials, I can enter into with a certain amount of confidence. Joy, not so sure on the joy. But I've had, I've ran into specific, specific circumstances 
where I was able to choose joy. I was able to choose to praise. Uh, the easiest way I've gotten there is when I'm sick. Listen, I don't get sick often when I get sick. I'm can thoroughly convinced that it is the end. The father is calling me home. I need to go ahead and write out my living will uh, because I'm going to die. Uh, so in those moments, whenever I'm sitting there and I can't, I, you know, when you're so sick, you just sit, you don't you can't even lay down. You just sit and it's the only relief from the illness. You ever get there? Anybody? It's in those moments in my life as a Christian the last handful of years that I've been able to choose joy and praise. Those were the, those are the ones where I knew in that moment, it was a circumstance that felt, I felt miserable. There wasn't anything about me that was bringing the kingdom, but I had a moment in that where I could start seeing, thank you, Lord. And it was like a choice, like, God, I know what your word says. I'm going to choose joy. Now that may not even be what the scripture means, right? It's talking about a different set of circumstances, but for me, it was applicable in those moments. The other time was whenever, uh, whenever we woke up that morning and Lupi was pregnant and she started bleeding. And, I, and we, we looked at each other and I grabbed her by the hands. And I said, we're going to start worshiping. We're going to start thanking God right now. We're going to start thanking him right now because we know he's good. No matter what's going to occur, no matter what's going to happen, no matter what this means, we're going to thank him right now. And we started saying, thank you, Lord, over and over and over. And we, and we sang, we sang a song and it may sound ridiculous, but whenever you see the terror in your wife's face as a believer, it's different. I've been through miscarriages and abortions as a non-believer, not believing in anything, right? And it never had the same impact. It never had, I never had empathy back then. And so in that moment, being able to truly choose joy in the face of opposition, in the face of the unknown, in the face of not being able to do anything to rectify or fix the situation for my wife who I love dearly. I really know, I feel like the meaning of two, two flesh becoming one, uh, cause we have real intimacy that I, I'd never experienced prior to believing in those moments. It's an active choice. It's not, you, it's, I don't think it's a, a lifestyle that you just start. I think part of it's lifestyle, right? I know there's gonna be consequence. I know there's gonna be circumstance. I know there's gonna be things that I have to face down. And so there is a lifestyle that begins to manifest out of what we believe. But I think there's real circumstances that become very, very personal, that land in a very, very real way that we have the ability in those moments to thank God for his goodness. And this is why the scripture says it clearly that all those things will lead you to a greater revelation of God's goodness. If it means it will work out me, work me out to perfect patience, right? To completion, to fulfillment. If that's what it means to go through these things, that's why I count it joy. It means that God is good on the beginning of it and the end of it and before it ever happened and at the very end of it all. It means that God is good no matter the circumstance. That's why we count it joy. Because Jeremiah 29, 11 says that he has the plan, right? He has the plan. He has a hope and a future that is in store for every one of us. And in that, in that, we know that he is good. And that's how we count it all joy. Listen, Monday, Monday and Wednesday mornings out there on the slab. Those are the moments you have, you're going to have to give over to knowing God is good because it's, it's not even about the physical exercise. It's about the surrender to authority. It's not if you can do 195 push-ups in two minutes. It's if you're willing to follow instruction to the best of your ability, to the place where your body will give out because you are, you're willing to fight to the very end for something brand new that you know he's good. You've chosen, you got to the end of you and you know you're not good. You got to the end of you and you knew that your best, your very best decisions brought you to this place. And now you trust you with, you trust me with you. And we lay this thing out. And in the midst of the things that seem too big, where you're ready to quit, those are the moments that you get to count it joy. Those are the moments. Give me my next one. James, uh, it's you, Joel. James 1, 13 through 18. Nor does he tempt anyone, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil. 
By their what? By their own evil. By whose? Their own evil. So listen, so right, listen, I said it whenever we began. What we're trying to understand is that there is a defeated enemy, right? The enemy, Satan, Lucifer, son of perdition, whatever you want to call him, right? There's all the, the names for him. He is the enemy. The difference is he's the defeated enemy. And then you have the inner me. See, the inner me is the one that will give up your authority to him. The inner me is the one that will surrender your authorities and allow him a victory in our life, although he's already been defeated once and for all. And at any moment, all you do is break the agreements. You know what the greatest lie and the greatest legal agreement every single man in their life forms with uh, Satan? Do you know what it is? Can't. Can't. If the word of God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I give the enemy legal right to have his way with me every time I say can't. Can't is one of those final words like all and everything. Just like can is one of those final words like all and everything. You ever heard that saying, can't never could do nothing? Because it's final. <laughs> to be able to start speaking those things, get, quit leaning back in my chair. My bad. To find something new, we have to start saying can. We have to start saying can. It's that simple. I can. I can. I can. Because listen, what he wants you to get working through your mind is the can't, the quit, the give up. You can give your very best. That done is excellence. You can give your very best in excellence unto God. Excellence is not perfection. Excellence is you know, listen, you know in your heart will be cl clear because in the sight of God, you know you gave your best. And that, then God, listen, then God moves before you. My own lustful desire, more common than not, is can't. It's the first one that tries to rule over my uncomfortability. I can't do that. I'm going to do this. Right now, we just break the agreement. Say, I break the agreement. I, break the agreement. I, can, do I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Keep reading, Joel. Wait, 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 wait. It says, when my own lustful desires rise up, now go. Then, after desire has conceived to give birth to sin. Let me give you an example. I'm going to bring some science into the mix. You ready? Yes. yes. Listen, at first, uh, I think about it. I'm going to use an easy example that all men can understand. I see her walking by. Well, for some of you, I see him walking by. I look, I acknowledge, this is a beautiful human. I turn away and I continue to walk. Absolutely all right, right? Absolutely okay. The other side of that is, I look, something rises up, I go to the future, whether it be undressing her, whatever that look, whether it be a, Listen, sometimes it doesn't even go that far. Sometimes it's just conversation. I start imagining the conversation between us. You know what I'm saying? Anybody ever do that? Yes. Like, it may start so much easier for you. Yes. It may not be as graphic. Yes. It may just be like I see her and then I imagine a future where I'm having a conversation. You see the future trip in it? Yes. You see how the enemy takes us out of position? Because any one of those are a fantasized future. It means I'm choosing to step out of this moment right now and surrender to an imaginary, to a lie. Once I've really done that, then the fantasy takes hold. The fantasy of the conversation, the fantasy of the, the interaction, the fantasy of the sexual uh, interaction. Once that thing manifests, listen, it grows and grows and grows. This is where the science comes in. When you go into fantasy and start playing that thing, whatever it is, could be conversation, could be sex, could be a fight, whatever that is, dopamine and norepinephrine is released. You get it? This is science. This is addiction. 
And guess what happens whenever that doesn't produce enough to give you the high that your body's looking for? We take the next step to get better dope. Keep going. When a little drum gives birth to death, don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of, heavenly, of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Once I have to act these things out, it becomes, it becomes a place of shame, it becomes, whatever it is. It, it can open doors of rejection. Listen, it says every, he is good, every good and perfect gift comes from above. The ability for you to interact with, with someone, the ability to have communication, the ability to have relationship. But look, we don't ask him first. If he's good and every good and perfect gift comes from above, why wouldn't we petition him and trust him if he brought us this far? On everything. And if you did, I would dare to say in four and a half, five years, uh, the impossible would have been done through your life. Because it came simply from listening and taking steps of obedience. In, in every aspect of your life. He says every good and perfect gift. It means everything that is good comes from the Father. But are we going to petition him? Not as a beggar. God, give me this, give me that. That's not even trusting him. You know my heart. I know you're sovereign. Your will be done in Jesus' name. And trusting him, believing that everything else that rises up is from me and there's no good within me. That's Jesus' own words. Good teacher, why do you call me good? There's nothing good but the Father. Can we begin to move in trust? Can we really surrender? That's a radical surrender, right? Not really, based on what we say we believe. Everybody in this room raised their hands that they believe, right? But are we willing to really? Listen, if there's any group, it would be us. Look at where our lives were. Look at where our lives ended up. And at that point, then he grabbed us. Why? Because there's, it's easiest for us to surrender if you think about it. If you think about it, we played out the scenario to the end. And all you have to do is not choose you. When your own lustful desires, there's nothing good here. I don't even trust my own desires. And it says the heart is deceitful above all things. I surrender my heart. Can you trust God with the desires of your heart? And then listen for him to give you instruction. Or do you put him in a box of expectation and say, this is, this is what, how God thinks. This is what God wants for my life. I've done that. I've been that guy. I got out of treatment. I went back to the girl that I had a little boy with, moved, or moved in with her. I'm not on the lease. Staying with her. We started doing everything we were before. She doesn't want to get married. She doesn't want to quit smoking. She doesn't want all those things that I thought we were. And I thought I had to go back. Because that's what God wanted me to do. Because that was my expectation. Because I had a child. We weren't married, none of that. Does that make sense? I'm not saying abandon your children, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, I wonder what he would have said if I just would have asked. God, what do you want me to do? Because we ended up having another child. See the damage, the circumstances that are created by me not asking him simply, God, because I wanted what God wanted. I just wasn't willing to ask because I thought I knew what he wanted. You understand? Just a petition, simple. God, teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. What about this, God? What about this, God? What about this, God? And then adhere to it. God, is this the woman for me? No. Then don't have sex with her. You get it? Is this the person for me? Okay, I'm gonna back off then if you say no, God. But my own desire is to feel the need of my flesh. And then there's, we wreak havoc and damage. Lead me not into temptation. You've gotta follow him then. You gotta ask him. You gotta have him give you direction on where exactly to go. Give me Revelation 21, six through eight. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha. 
Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abdominal murderers, sexually immortal, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars have their part in the lake which burns with fire and bridgestone with is the second death. It says anybody that asks, I'm going to give it to them. I'm going to give every bit of it. I'm not going to hold anything back. It's yours. It's done. A temptation is going to be to judge those that don't have it. You know that, right? Listen, it's going to be easy to fall into us wielding a sword of scripture to show you what the things in your life are, are that are wrong. But that has nothing to do with how Jesus handled it. Jesus always came with love and grace and then truth. He enters in love and, with love and grace. Who he is, the spirit inside of him would bring conviction and they would expose themselves most of the time. The demons would say, we know who you are. Temptation is going to be able to be to cast judgment as we walk this thing out and separate ourselves from the ones that we're supposed to be ministering to. There's something that should break your heart in that because everybody in the second part of the scripture was me. That was you. Read it again, Joel. I mean, not Joel, Zach. And he said to me, it is done. Just the last part. I just want the, where it talks about, but those that don't, the idolaters, the, that whole thing. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abdominal murderers, sexually immortal, sorcerers, idolaters, and his all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That was me. Anybody else in the room? That was me. Raise your hand if it was you. Look, get them up. There's got to be something that says, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it removes anything from my heart that would hinder anyone else from finding the freedom that I found in this resurrected life. It would keep us from putting regulations and stipulations on someone else so that for them to find it. Well, if you're not doing this, this, and this, you don't have it, get away from me. It doesn't even make sense to me. We try to start holding people accountable to our set of beliefs, even though they don't believe. And we're not even willing to have a conversation to see if they are. And the funny part is, if we start having a conversation and then we choose that we don't have to be right, it may move in the relationship where then they can receive what you're really trying to say. Because they understand that you're coming with love and truth. Grace and truth. The call now, therefore, since we have this ministry, is for everyone in the second part. Everyone that was just like us. The ministry of reconciliation. There's no way to the Father but through the Son. Anybody, where's the Son? In us. So how are people going to get to the Father if we're avoiding them? How are people going to get to the Father if we say, no, 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 you're not doing it right. And then we don't go and try to build a relationship so that they can see our path if it is the right one and if not we're going to see their path and one of us is going to follow the other one and neither one of us have to be right jesus is proclaimed right, right. and then we're teaching relationship the doctrine and the theology doesn't matter because we're teaching relationship is god real yes. it, it does he speak yes. okay then all we try to do is teach relationship and if that person has a relationship, and if you have a relationship, then he's going to say, I, man, I feel like, like me, man, God's really put on my heart to stop cussing. And he's put on my heart where every time I say one, I just got to stop what I'm doing and say, please forgive me to whoever it is that I'm talking to and let them know I'm trying to stop. That's my willing submission and humility to other people around me to say, I want to do better for you. Because he told me that I was hindering what was coming for you by my language. That means I got to choose to walk with you in this. 
I can't have myself above you because how could I ask your forgiveness for something I'm doing if I position myself above you? I have to position myself below you. The lowest. And we'll fight for that position if we really believe what we say we believe. We'll fight to be that. In, the, in a great, healthy way. I don't even know what it looks like yet, but I know that's the, that's the goal. The least shall be first. Servants to all. Bond servants, in fact. What does all mean? All. Does that mean everyone described in that second part of that scripture? Yes, everyone. It especially means them. We're going to fight over serving each other. But if we go out there and serve, the next time they have, remember they had that the witchcraft thing the, in the park? Yeah. Well, let's, let's go serve them. And everybody's like, oh, you got to protect all your guys. And I'm like, look, we'll pray, but we're going to serve them because it's also about them. I, I, I believe greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. Period. Period. We pray a covering. We don't let anything in. Make sure our heart's pure so the enemy has no foundation, no ability to grab on anything, and we go and serve everyone, regardless of their sin, because sin is sin. It doesn't matter what flavor, what color, how big or how small, God can't look on any of it. We serve them in that place. We love them because he first loved us, and then in the realm of being able to have conscious contact with Christ through us, then they have a pathway to the Father. Or I'm reading it wrong. I don't know. <laughs> Second Timothy. We will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. <laughs> if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. It says... I'm going to key in just on the last part of the scripture, really, where it says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. I'm, I'm going to share two things. One, one that I, I just want everybody to know, because I, I've run into a lot of people that, that start praying for miracles, and they believe because they don't have great enough faith, the miracle doesn't happen. And I want to make sure that everyone knows that your level of faith, faith does not dictate a miracle, period. He's faithful all the time. I've got to surrender to his voice. Did, did, I'm going to pray for you. You ask me for prayer, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for God's will to be done. Not because I'm trying to back out and declare in the healing, healing, but because I believe God speaks. And if he, if he in, intends for me to pray the healing, he's going to say, pray for the, the meniscus. Pray for the, you know, he's going to give me clavicle. Pray. He's going to pray for the, he's going to say, pray for that. Speak to that. Prophesy to the bones, son of man. Y'all, y'all not know what I'm talking about in Ezekiel, right? He tell, look, he gets specific. Bones, sinews, tissues. That's a God that speaks. Does he still speak today? Yes. My faith has nothing to do with his faithfulness. My faith had nothing to do with Loopy losing that baby. And neither did hers. Your lack of faith had nothing to do with someone dying or getting hurt or something not going right or, or something going terribly wrong. It had nothing to do with those things. Sometimes we're, we're, our heart doesn't even know how to cry out to him. I know this from my own, of my own experience. There's massive traumas. You guys know most of them. But when I cried out at 38, he stepped back into those places and healed those things. But he was in the room the whole time. He's just outside of time. So he is waiting on me to cry out because he intends to use our trauma as a testimony so that others get to know Jesus, so that they don't hold it against him, so that they don't hate him for him not being there. It's us revealing that at this age, we cry out and he steps in. What, Joel? same month John won an axe throwing contest at the refuge ranch and then in, and then in, in March at the end, and then in March at IOP he won a, a, art, a contest he drew a really nice car better than everybody's in IOP so 
even though he's blind, he's like, there's some gifts that are being revealed. Right. Or there's like, and it wasn't by luck that he won the axe throwing contest. Yeah. And he's an artist. Sure. That's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's really slowly, good stuff. Slowly. That's good stuff. So whenever I, you know, part of my story of meeting Jesus is uh, I heard an audible voice and I start walking from Dallas to Denver in the month of January. Uh, ended up waiting until about mid-February. There's a massive arctic storm on the horizon and I end up walking through it. And I get to a place called, uh, so Clayton, New Mexico is one town up from it. I can't remember the one. Huh? Te and, uh, Textline, Texas. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I'm in Texline, Texas. There's an all-sups there. I see a hotel sign in the distance and, uh, and I'm like, okay, so at least I know there's some stuff that, you know, I'm, and it's, it's cold. It had dropped way below zero the morning before that. And I walk into this all-sups and there's a beautiful girl working and I get distracted, fully distracted to the point where I'm like helping her take out the trash and I'm kind of like distracted. <laughs> And, uh, and then she's like, okay, my shift's up. I got to go home. And, uh, and so I'm like, oh, Lord God, I'm, I'm walking. And so uh, this lady gives me a ride to Clayton, which is tw 12 miles maybe. And I see a sign while we're driving, and it says, don't pick up any hitchhikers in this area because there's a, like a federal yeah, prison right there. And, uh, and I get to Clayton, and I, I call who we always call when we get in trouble. I call Mama. And, uh, and hey, she got me a cheap hotel that night because it was literally snows piling up as fast as you can count it, you know? And uh, I get there and I started getting rid of all my stuff. So I, I get there and I may, I'm making deals with God. Like I know my faith was compromised. I know I compromised. I'm on this spiritual journey, right? You told me to go and then I was ready to give it up if she was gonna give it up, just being honest. And uh, all fully out the window, but God was trying to show me some things like his faithfulness. And so I get rid of like half of my gear. I leave it in the room and the next morning I get up, I start walking, buy a pack of cigarettes, smoke one cigarette. I quit smoking, throw my brand new pack of cigarettes away. Did that like seven times. Uh, and I'm walking, I'm walking between in what they call the Raton Pass from Clayton, New Mexico to Trinidad, Colorado. It's 99 miles. And it's all, I'm listening. The only thing I got this crank radio and I'm listening uh, to, uh, to cat, the only thing you can find is Catholic radio. And, uh, and they're talking about, well, you know, if blah, blah, blah happens, we're closing, the retirement pass will, be, pass will be closed. Snow's coming in this way. I'm watching coyotes like trail me two coyotes out in the distance because there's nothing out there. If you've ever been out there, there's nothing out there. So I'm watching them trail me out there and I, I'm, I'm starting to just start worshiping. Like it was a moment where I'm like, I know I let you down. I know I let you down and I'm okay dying out here. You know what I mean? Uh, because I, I gave up, I still had the magical Jesus, like you had to earn it somehow. That uh, if I faltered, then I wouldn't get the magical Jesus powers that he had in store for me. Which was all what he, the whole reason he wanted to break all this mentality out of me. And he says, look, I'm moving on hearts. This is what he said to me, he said, I, he said, I'm faithful. There's somebody coming. I may have to move on 50 different hearts, but the 50th one is already on his way. Be grateful for the 49 that don't listen to me because they'll grow in intimacy because of their rebellion. I'll draw them closer. And at that moment, I knew that no matter what I did, he would always be faithful. So in all of it, those times whenever you thought you've blasphemed the spirit or taken the Lord's name in vain or messed up one too many times, what I'll tell you is he is always faithful. He cannot deny himself. The blood is bigger than anything that you can ever imagine or do, no matter what it is, at any moment at the, when the posture of your heart shifts and is softened, just, just like that. You just receive it. I don't know how to tell you to get to that place. There's no good recipe for it. It's going to take fear and trembling or, you know, frustration and trembling. And uh, you're going to have to be in awe of God. And, and you're going to have to have a moment where you've fumbled. I think it's, I don't know if her name's Hannah, but in 1 Samuel, there's a prayer by Samuel's mother. Is it Hannah? It's called Hannah's Prayer. And it's just really powerful. 
and it has to do with God's faithfulness. I would, enc- yeah, I would encourage you if you have an opportunity to read that, to read it. Because it's very, very powerful and about God's faithfulness. <coughs> Romans 8. Wait. There's a whole lot in Romans 8. What do y'all got? We got, we got nine minutes. I'm gonna, it'll take me a whole hour to go through Romans 8. Uh, anybody got anything? I'm not going to cut you out any earlier, so might as well start a nine-minute discussion on something. What do you got? of faith will heal the sick. I've been sick in my mindset. Um, I apologize to the whole group. We processed it yesterday in IOP, and man, the feedback was hard to get. I was told I was defiant. I didn't see it. I screamed out in the shower. I was kind of baptized again last night. And somehow, I didn't know how, I asked him, he ushered peace in through a song, prophetic praise song in the shower. Sergeant Major yelled at me, hey, whoever's in there, needs to tone it, calm, calm down. And normally I'd get frustrated and keep singing, but somehow the Spirit of God came in and my song turned from some cussing and screaming it out to God to peace in it I was able to step out of there a new man today and and he's just been dropping bomb loads left and right and I've been excited and he's just been throwing up on everybody with my attitude and again I apologize and some people may not understand I didn't have a correct understanding why people weren't understanding because it wasn't coming from Christ. And you prayed the other day for me when I asked for healing and sickness that was in me. You prayed prophetic words. You said, whatever's not of Jesus, come out of him. It took him a minute, but it's happening. Good deal. Good deal. You know, we, be, we didn't always have those showers, but that's exactly the reason we built those showers the way they are. So that you could get alone. That's why we made them a little bigger. We made them where it's more. We used to have these weird stalls. We built out a fencing material, and it wasn't very private. We did the best we could, but I'm glad that uh, it, it just made. It was like there was some big sacrifice. Bob knows to put in them, doing them like we did, and and I'm just glad that that you were able to get alone with him in that moment. That's that's the whole reason we have tankless water heaters, so you can stand in there if need be, and not for anything you're not supposed to be in there for but to get along with God. And so I'm grateful that that's, you're having that breakthrough. That's the hope, man. Who else? We got five, six minutes. Nobody. Nothing. Zero. Not going to smoke. We'll wait. Well, I'll stand here for six. What do you got, Rico? I got a lot of breakthrough with Josh Myers, just because uh, me and him are very similar in our, uh, I guess, the way that we uh, uh, talk to people or things like that. And it's just been, it's been awesome to be with a person who, is like I am that I couldn't get along with at first and butt heads with in a way and then and then we had a lot of breakthrough last night we're at NA and we're talking about um, about acceptance and uh, I finally got to talk about some things that 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 people at Nehemiah Dallas there's one man who was there who was about my age one time he was outside we're smoking a cigarette and he's like um he's like you did meth right and I'm like yeah and I'm like um I was like, yeah, I was doing meth. And he's like, uh, did you ever do any gay stuff on meth? And I said, no. And he's like, I did. And I was like, well, that sucks. You know, but I did, and I have. And, um, and I didn't have the freedom that I do now to talk about those things, and he did. And uh, it just made me be able to speak about that stuff more since I've been here, and to be able to say, like, yeah, I've done a lot of messed up things. I've done a lot of things that I'm not proud of, but being able to speak of these things Honestly, like Josh has been, um, it's uh, we I have freedom from it now, and and I can get along with this man in, 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 a, in a different way now because we both have that, we're both free from it, and I, I don't have to be like I was back then to the other man and be like, oh that sucks, 
Yeah. You know, and then just lie to myself and everybody around me. I could be honest. And I, worked, I just want to talk about that. Okay. So let's, I'm going to say, I'm going to say two things. One, one, so there's in a is a, anonymous and anonymity. So let's keep our conversation. No, I, outside. I know I'm just, just to be cautious. I'm not, it's not a rebuke. I'm just saying, be cautious and then make sure you're not sharing anybody's process. So what do you got Rusty? What do you got? That's good stuff. Anybody else? We got three minutes. What do you got, Brian? I'm gonna jump to Brian, and then I'll go to Joel. I don't know if you read the article this morning. I did not read the article. Listen, I, my mornings have been so Loopy leaves today for until Sunday night. Yeah. So yeah, this morning was. Well, for me, it was like, private. I felt I, I felt uh, like this. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, for me, uh, I felt. Uh, <laughs> I finally, I, man, I haven't felt like any real conviction lately, you know what I mean? I've just felt like, like I've just been here, like sitting, like doing the same shit. Sorry for cussing, I'm trying to work on that too. I got three girls, I need to. Um, but it talks about readiness, right? Yeah. And how like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like an expectancy on God, like if God's talking to me, like, like, and I still don't do what he says because, like, I, got, I get into a confrontation with a guy, right? And God's sitting there. I'm in the middle of worship, and I'm sitting there shaking because I know it's God. He's like, go pray for that man. But instead, I'm like, no, I'm not today, God. Just cussed him out yesterday. Give me, like, a week. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm sitting there telling God what to do. Am I really ready? But, like, then I'm sitting there at night reading my Bible, wondering why I haven't gained an understanding of what the Word's trying to tell me, right? But am I doing it for my own glory and satisfaction? Or am I doing it to speak life into people and not death like I've done in the past? You know what I mean? Yeah. So when we're out there talking about bitches and, and stuff, and I talked to another brother about it, and we're, I'm sitting there and like, what did I do when I left here? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and I think I came across it last night because I, I, I've been reading stories like 1 Samuel, King David, all these things, and I read Genesis, and I, I was like not getting nothing, right? And I finally something just hit me. I did that Bible drop, and I came across Hebrews. And it talks about how powerful the word of God is. It's sharper. It's str sharper than or, than any double-edged sword. You know what I mean? Like had the power that it has to literally. If, my understanding of it was like the power to really hurt somebody, convict somebody, or the power to speak love into some. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that and and, I, and today when we read that, I was like, oh, like I was like, what the? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I just felt it. Like it was something different. Wow. You know, that what I would say is also those moments when he says, go pray. If you step in obedience, you'll start having breakthrough. Yeah. that's Because he's in that place. He's still standing right there the last time he spoke, yeah. waiting on you to move in obedience. Because it happened yesterday and I ignored him. Well, Like, I know and he's not talking to me like, hey, Brian, this is yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like. My or with own, like a British. Thought, it's like a, yeah, or like a. Scandinavian. Yeah. But it was like, it was continuously like, like me telling myself or like hearing my own voice in my head saying, you probably need to go pray for this. Yeah. Go put some hands on. And that's, yeah, that's it. And I didn't, you know, and I yeah. felt that conviction. Well, they let's do it next time. Don't, Eric, don't move the camera. Don't run around. Let's just pause. What do you got, Joel? It drives me out of my mind. All right. Thank you, guys. Let's pray real quick. Or was there anybody else with their hand up? Well, is it going to be quick? Yeah. 30 seconds. We got. Um, uh, so, yeah, like 
out of respect for like all the NA and AA stuff, but like anybody has my permission to share. Like, cause I'm completely like Rico has my anybody, cause like I want everybody to know about that. Uh, it's a testimony, and I have freedom from it, and. Uh, I want other people to experience the same freedom. So. Fair enough. I just want to, because we got so many new guys. Yeah. If you hear it in process group, it's private. It's so we, listen, if you start throwing around something, somebody tells you right. in process group, I'm gonna kick you out right. because we're under this. We, we come, we bear with one another right. under those things so that Jesus can search us out and heal those wounds. Right. So if you start wielding those personal private moments around, I'm just going to pack you out. So, all right, Father God, I just ask you to bless these men with more you. Let them have a moment, just a moment where they see your face. Let them have a moment where they can touch your garment. Bless them with intimacy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen.